had a lot of, it was it was rough like we definitely had a lot of tough times growing up and I think that art and songwriting for me was just this really obvious really like tangible and visceral way of getting all these things in my head and just like shoving them out so I don't have to think about them anymore mm -hmm. I definitely had a lot of mean people throughout the course of my life all of a sudden like within a week like every single label Whoa. was like trying to get in. I've never dated anyone before. I'm like 19 and I still haven't even had my first kiss yet. I think growing up I just didn't really feel very much like, um, you know, very comfortable like with myself. Today I'm here with Conan Gray. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I've been watching your stuff for years, oh, so thank full you. circle. <laughs> <laughs> so were you born in San Diego or Lemon Grove or? Yeah, I was born in Lemon Grove, which is like a smallish suburb of San Diego, kind of like close to Tijuana. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I lived there for a couple years and then um, moved to billion other yeah. places but yeah that's where I was born mm -hmm. and how, actually how did your parents meet they met my mom met my dad at some party somewhere in Tijuana <laughs> um, and they were both super young and they got married and and had us and then got divorced and got married a billion other times but mm -hmm. yeah it was it was they, they had a funny little love story yeah, I think. yeah. <laughs> and was it difficult your dad was in the military right yeah my dad was in the military growing up so we definitely moved around a lot we lived in japan for a couple years for your, was it your grandfather right yeah, yeah yeah and um yeah i've moved around a billion times i think throughout the course of my life i was always just always gone and always just like moving homes um until i moved to texas um once i moved to texas in the sixth grade i just like stayed in mm -hmm. texas for for the whole entire rest of like middle school and high school do you think that your short time in Jap japan like influenced you as a person now yeah i mean i think just like being japanese influenced me a ton especially like being a japanese person in texas is a, is That's just, really uncommon, right? Yeah it's, yeah, it's super uncommon, and I think just being Asian in Texas is uncommon. I mean, I was, I was one of like three Asian people at my whole entire middle school, so yeah. I think just immediately that's just very like ostracizing, you know, makes you mm -hmm. kind of different from the other kids. And um, yeah, I was a really like lonely, quiet child, and mm -hmm. I had a lot of time to think, and I think that's what culminated songwriting for mm -hmm. me. How much of a Japanese presence did you? your mom teach you like the cultures and everything well I mean Japanese was my first language oh, so wow. yeah so it definitely played a really big role in like the way that I am and I think that I get a lot of my like personality quirks and things like that from my Japanese side for sure and this is something I asked a lot of like mixed kids but did you have any like identity problems growing up or confusion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, I'm like sure you know. Like, yeah, as soon as like, I saw you, I'm like, I know you're mixed. <laughs> I know, you just know, right? You yeah. just have like a sense. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that like when you're mixed, you're in this like very specific category where you're not, you're not white, but you're also yeah. not Japanese. And, and Japanese people know it when they see you. They're like, oh, you must be American. Yeah, and, you're foreign. And, and white people are always like, oh, well, like, you don't look like me. What are yeah. you? you know? So, um, yeah, I think it definitely was a, a, it was a weird thing growing up. I didn't really know who I was. And mm -hmm. I think I spent a lot of my childhood just like thinking about what I was. And I, by the time I got to high school, I just realized like I, I, I am what I am. And it's cool. I mm -hmm. like myself. So yeah, that's it really. Yeah, but definitely I think all mixed kids are kind of confused for a large majority of their childhood. Mm-hmm. And then what did, what kind of jobs did your mom do? Um, my mom uh, does like food safety. So she oh. like makes sure that people like don't get poisoned by foods that come out of factories. And <laughs> growing up, my father had like a slew of jobs. But like the pool. Yeah, he like cleaned <laughs> pools for a bit. Um, but most notably, he was a professional arm wrestler oh, for really? seven years. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he still is. He's What's like, his name? Be able to look him up. <laughs> his name's Greg. <laughs> <laughs> 
he's like super buff and um You're like, the thing great. about like that being like a really yeah. buff guy name. <laughs> But the thing about being like a professional arm wrestler is like you're you don't make money you're just broke mm -hmm. so me, me and my siblings we were just broke our whole lives yeah. we always had no money <laughs> but it was fun it was silly yeah. where do you think you got your creative side from i have no clue um everyone in my family is really technical and like oh. really um yeah like my sister is a complete opposite of me in every single way like she super good at like math and science and she's like a nurse now she has pin straight hair and she like looks nothing <laughs> like me and I'm like this crazy like wild child um but yeah I, th I think I just got it from I don't know I I think I was just like a really big overthinker and mm. my childhood definitely like wasn't very like you know I had a lot of, it was it was rough like we definitely had a lot of tough times growing up and I think that Art and songwriting for me was just this really obvious, really like tangible and visceral way of getting all these things in my head and just like shoving them out so I don't have to think about them anymore. Mm -hmm. What kind of music was played in the house when you were growing up? Hmm. I listened to a lot of U2. Oh. Um, that was a really big influence, I think, just Bono and like his, his voice and his sound was just so big and beautiful. and. Also, I listened to a lot of country music growing up. I think that's like a really, like, not cool thing to say, but, <laughs> but I mean, I'm from Texas. Like, I mm -hmm. definitely consider Texas home just because I moved around so much when I was little. Um, but yeah, I, I listened to a lot of country music, so I think a lot of my songwriting stems from, from country music and, and its ideals in the way that it's very much, like, storytelling. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I love country music. <laughs> I know it's not very cool, but I love country music. <laughs> Do you remember the first CD you bought? Or I remember purchased. the first CD I ever owned was gifted to me by my friend Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> um, and it was um, Vampire Weekend's Modern Vampires of the City. Oh. And it was just like the craziest album to me. I remember listening to it like 10,000 times on repeat. And my mother found the CD, like the disc CD, mm -hmm. and she threw it away <laughs> because what? she was like, like this, this music must be satanic. I was oh, very super religious. Like, she, was like, she was like, "There's vampires on this." Like she threw it out. She's like, "You don't want to listen to this anymore." <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. I, you know, modern vampires of the city. I fucking love vampires. <laughs> the, the coolest band ever. <laughs> so, did both sides, like your mom and dad's side, raise you to be really religious? No, not at all. My dad was like super atheist <laughs> and and really crazy and like you know arm wrestled and like did a bunch of crazy shit and and me and my sister would go over to his house and just kind of like go wild and and then on my mom's side we'd come back home and she'd cook us dinner every night and like you know read us the bible mm -hmm. and uh yeah it was definitely like two complete opposite worlds and i think a really common theme in my life is just that like it changed a lot like it was mm -hmm. just always changing so I think that the reason why I wrote music and the reason why I was always recording things and always like taking photos is because I was just like so focused on like my life is gonna change within like the next couple of months I know it mm -hmm. so I wanted to keep grasp of everything that I possibly could and yeah definitely had like complete opposite worlds mm -hmm. so were you so you always went to church and are you still religious now um yeah we went to church from like ages six to like 13 and then after that I was like I don't want to do this like mm -hmm. I'm just gonna do what I want because I've always been like super rebellious <laughs> um, I'm not religious anymore but I'm definitely like wouldn't consider myself an atheist I think mm -hmm. there's like something but I don't know what it is mm -hmm. guess we'll find out <laughs> <laughs> so in school were you always just really good at the art subjects um I don't know I think I kind of kept all my friends like in the dark about me making art um, I was very studious. I worked really, really hard oh. in school, and um, going to college was like a really big goal of mine. So I worked so hard to get into UCLA. Mm -hmm. And but like in school, especially like most of high school, I did art. Um, but I kind of like didn't really think of it as like a possibility for me to do as a career. And like I did choir in school. I didn't really like it. I was like, it's kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think. When I ended up getting signed, and, and when I, when Idle Town ended up doing so well, uh, all my friends were definitely very surprised. They were like, "What? Like, what are you doing?" Because like, all my friends, you know, just normal high school students and mm -hmm. from a small town. So, you know, it was it was definitely weird for them to see it, and I didn't. I yeah, I, I don't know. I kind of was very like focused on school most mm -hmm. of the time, on like the traditional subjects. Was that from within that you were so? 
like hard working or was it kind of your mom also pushing you? Um, it was definitely from within. My parents like really like didn't care growing up. You know, like we, me and my sister, we just like, I think we worked so hard because we knew that like if we wanted to get out of the situation that we were in, that we would have to do it ourselves. Mm. Like no one was gonna help us. So we were just always like working our, <laughs> our asses off our whole lives. We were always just working and working and working. And I think that I got a lot of my, my um, work ethic from my sister. She just has always just been like, she's just perfect. Like <laughs> works so hard, so nice to everyone she meets. And I'm just like have this mean streak and, I, and I'm just so like, you know, angry all the time. But uh, yeah, I think I got a lot of my work ethic from her. Did you play instruments? Yeah, I, I played a lot of, I played piano and um, then I started playing guitar when I was like, 10 or 11 and then from there I just knew guitar was like my instrument mm. <laughs> and then I kept on playing and playing and started songwriting when I was 12. Did you take lessons? I took lessons from this like college student that we met for like a year <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm, I like hate being told what to do so I was you know he told me to practice I wouldn't practice and I, um, yeah it, it was definitely a, fr a fruitless effort. Mm -hmm. When you were young did you you made music but you just never put it out? Yeah I I started songwriting when I was 12 because of Adele. I like found out about Adele's existence. I was like, whoa, like you can write music? Like I think I'd always written like little jingles and things, but I didn't understand that you like you could write a song. Mm -hmm. um, but then, yeah, when I was 12, I just kind of like started piecing together like fuller songs and more complete songs. And I figured like someone might want to hear it. So I was just, you know, I would record them and put them up on the internet. Um, but you know, no one really gave a shit for most of the time um, and then around my senior year of high school something just clicked and all of a sudden people were listening. What were the early songs you wrote about? <laughs> I mean <laughs> I don't know when you're 12 you don't really have that much depth like no offense to 12 year olds but I just know that 12 year old me like didn't have that much depth I was just very like you know I'd write about like someone who was mean to me one day like oh I hate my life I want to die like I'm 12. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, I definitely didn't have very much to write about, but I definitely wrote a lot. Once I found out about songwriting, it just like, it was just the love of my life. It, I wrote like, you know, a couple songs a day and a couple songs a day for like eight years. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of songs. Yeah. But yeah. And you also, you mentioned previously, like you got bullied in middle school. Yeah, I mean, I definitely had a lot of mean people throughout the course of my life. I was just... I was just a weird kid. I was like really quiet and, mm -hmm. and um, just, you know, I kind of kept to myself and didn't really know the right thing to say at the right time. And uh, yeah, I definitely dealt with a lot of mean people. And I think I like am the type of person that for some reason I'm like very, very scared of everyone, but I'm also very confrontational. So like, you know, if someone was mean to me, I would just like stab them or something. Like oh, I, would really? just, I would just, yeah, I was really like, You're ah, like, I'm not, like I wouldn't let people mess with me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had a lot of mean people, but I always dealt with them somehow. <laughs> I was gonna ask you like, what advice do you have for people who are going I to wouldn't, police? Yeah. I you, wouldn't, like, just I wouldn't advise, cause you know, like you'd probably get in trouble, but yeah, no, yeah, I, ju I was just like, I didn't put up with bullshit. I was like, oh, you can't be mean to me. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did uh, they stop coming? Yeah, they stopped. Oh wow, <laughs> so you got the advice really to beat up people. Oh, uh, no, 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 don't be <laughs> Also the thing is though, also like I had a really good friend group by the time mm. I got to like the end of middle school and by the time I was in high school, like I just had this big group of friends and like we all just stuck to ourselves and me and people were like, didn't really bother. They were like, mm -hmm. oh, well, he seems busy. Like, he seems yeah. preoccupied. <laughs> and also, like, my friends would always stick up for me. Like, mm -hmm. if anyone was ever mean to me, they always, always, like, told the teachers and stuff like that. I mean, I think that's the most important thing to do. It's just, yeah. like, have people who are gonna, like, actually care about you and, and also, like, tell an adult. Like, it does help. In mm -hmm. a way, it helps. Yeah. And when you were young, your teacher found your YouTube, right, and showed it, yeah. showed it to the class? Yeah, my, in eighth grade, I like around the end of the school year, mm -hmm. one of my teachers found out about these videos that I'd been making. And there were just these like dumb little like things around the house. I'd like record my dog and be like, look at my dog, you know? <laughs> um, but then, yeah, oh my God, a cat. Oh yeah, oh my God. <gasps> Looks kind of creepy. I just can see it. Is it? Oh, there, yeah, that's in frame. Oh, that's like two colors, like brown and black. It's so cute. Black. Really oh, yeah. cute eyes.
Um, yeah, but, but uh, yeah, they played my videos on like the projector screen, which was terrifying. Yeah, I was like, kind that's the worst, horrifying. <laughs> the worst moment. Um, also, just being like a terrified middle schooler, I was like, I think I'm gonna die right now. Like, I think this is what my death is gonna be. Um, but yeah, yeah, we got past it. Mm -hmm. She was a nice teacher. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like growing up through school that everyone knew you were kind of a YouTuber? Did, did people um, treat you differently looking back? I don't know. I don't think anyone really cared. Also, mm -hmm. like, I definitely kept it under wraps as much as I could. You know, the only people that knew were, you know, my friends. And all my friends were just normal high schoolers. Like, no one else was doing what I was doing. So I didn't really feel very much like a YouTuber. And, like, YouTube to me was just, like, this, like, weekend project that I did. Um, like, I was really sentimental. So I was, like, always recording videos with, like, me and my friends spending time together. And then I was always putting them together and, like, making little, like, diaries and things like that and I put them up there just because for some reason people liked to see into what I was doing and see into my life and I think that I think that people like found comfort in the fact that like I was living a pretty normal life and like I wanted people to see how beautiful a, a like normal suburban life is even though like my childhood wasn't very normal or suburban at all but yeah yeah what were the early inspirations for kind of your aesthetic for your videos and then how that transitioned into your music? Um, I'm not sure. I think, I think my aesthetic was built a lot by like being a Texan. Like, I think for the rest of the world, like seeing my clothing, oh, doggy. <laughs> so many pets on this. <laughs> I think that like, Pete, like the rest of the world saw my like clothing style and things like that and thought it was like kind of weird, but I mean, it was pretty like like everyone in Texas kind of dressed like that oh. and also like I think just like not really growing up with very much money like thrift shopping wasn't like a thing that we did because it was like cool you know like it was a thing that we did because we didn't have money you know and I was mm -hmm. like I, I think getting that like retro feel was just something that came out of like buying clothes that were like actually old you know and um yeah I think I wanted to just like make the best out of what I had and and um I I thought it was really cool how like you could like thrift shop and like get things secondhand and still look as cool as you mm -hmm. want to like you know. What about Idle Town Click to you that you wanted to put it out kind of as a single and, single and take it seriously? Yeah well I definitely didn't take it seriously when I was <laughs> making it like I very specifically remember writing it in my shower <laughs> like while I was showering <laughs> and I recorded it on a like really really cheap microphone that I'd like saved up money for and that I taped onto a broken lamp and I like produced it myself on GarageBand and it definitely like wasn't, I didn't know that anything was gonna come of it. Um, I recorded the music video on like a point and shoot camera like worse than this one <laughs> and I just drove through like my hometown um, and yeah, I didn't really think anything was gonna come out of this music or what I was doing um, and then just like put it up there on a whim People liked it, so I was like, I wonder if I can put this on Spotify. Like, I wanted to figure that out, and I figured it out, put it up there, and then, like, within a week, it had gone on the charts, which mm -hmm. was just bizarre, you know? Because wow. I, I was really just, like, a kid from Texas. Like, I, we had no clue. My friends were all shocked, and, it was, yeah, it was really crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what were you going to study at UCLA? Well... Or on track for now? Yeah, I, I'm studying communications and also, like, some music industry stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm taking a, a quarter off because I'm on tour, mm -hmm. yay, <laughs> which is really fun. <laughs> it's like everything I wanted to do with my life, so mm -hmm. I was like, oh, maybe I'll take a little some time off. <laughs> what kind of career path did you have in mind? Did you feel like you could make it as a musician? Yeah, I mean, I definitely didn't think that I was going to make it as a musician. Like, I, I don't know, just so much happened in a year. Um, I'd always been writing, but I never really expected anyone to listen, and um, for me, I, like, writing was always just, like, out of necessity, and I wrote the EP, like, my upcoming EP, without even really, like, realizing that I'd done it, oh. and then we, like, produced it with my, with one of our friends, Dan, and, like, you know, we were just planning on releasing it ourselves, and then, like, I got signed, and all these crazy things happened, um, but yeah, I mean, when I entered college, I really thought I was just gonna, like, go to college, and then, like, work an office job, and, uh, you know, you make plans for life and they never actually go the way you mm. think. Um, and it, yeah, it's been a really crazy, super exciting ride. Were a lot of labels reaching out to you? 
it, yeah, it was a really weird thing. It was, it was like a, all of a sudden, like within a week, like every single label Whoa. was like trying to get in and I don't know. It just kind of happened. Yeah. <laughs> it was really fast. Like people always like, oh, it happens fast. But like, it really happened mm -hmm. fast. And you're with Republic now? Or? Yeah, I'm with Republic. <laughs> Love my little family. Mm -hmm. How did you decide to sign with them? Um, they were just like the coolest. Like, they were just so nice and like extreme. Like, they just like were so like extremely in love with me. I was like, I just knew it was... <laughs> Um, I just knew it was the right pick. And also, like, Republic, like, all my favorite artists are Republic. Yes. Like, Lord and Florence and, like, James Blake and just, like, so many fucking amazing people. So I just, <laughs> yeah, it just was pretty clear to me. What was the inspiration behind Crush Culture, the song and the video? Um, well, I've never dated anyone before. I'm, like, 19 and I still haven't even had my first kiss yet. So, <laughs> um, but, like, throughout high school, all my friends were always dating people and gone through like a lot of boyfriends and girlfriends and things like that so I was always like super bitter about it you know I'd mm. see them and I was like oh disgusting like y'all are so in love and I didn't have it at all <laughs> I have to say hi to everyone <laughs> Every animal we pass <laughs> um, yeah and then um, I directed the video myself because I just like knew I had this like very clear vision of like me going through this high school just like destroying every single couple's dates I possibly <laughs> could. Um, but yeah I think crush culture like came out of this spot of bitterness. I think everyone who's single kind of looks at people who are in love and you kind of mm. want to be happy for them but you're more just kind of like God like y'all are so <laughs> disgustingly in love and it's like I want to be you but I can't so I'm just going to beat you up you know. <laughs> Yeah, that was my logic. <laughs> and what was the idea behind your like girly boy videos with the nail polish and everything? Was that something that has always like been a theme throughout your life, kind of? Yeah, I think like growing up, I definitely didn't feel very much like. Watch where you're going. <laughs> this pavement is like three feet, by the I way. <laughs> I think like, yeah, I think growing up, I just didn't really feel very much like. Um, you know, very comfortable, like, with myself, and, and, uh, oh. we might get hit by this pickup yeah. truck. <laughs> Maybe we should just pass. <laughs> I think it just kind of came out of, like, I didn't really know what my identity was, I didn't really like, know who I was, but then, like, growing up and, like, kind of seeing all these people and meeting new people, I realized, like, it doesn't really matter what I am, like, if I want to do something, then I'll do it, if I want to paint my nails, then I'll do it, like, you know, we live in a time now where, because of all the people in the past who, like, you know, fought and fought and fought for our rights to express ourselves the way that we want and to love who we want. That like I get to be this person who just gets to say like, oh, I don't really know what I am, and mm -hmm. but I'm gonna do what I want to do, and I and I know that I'm in a safe space to do it now because of the people in the past who fought for us. Mm -hmm. How would you say your music has changed compared to early songs you wrote? Hmm. I think like the beginning music was like really like folk singer songwriter country oh. music just because it was like what I listened to mm -hmm. um, and also I just like I had a guitar you know so um, yeah I think it, ch it changed a lot and I've been learning a lot throughout the process there's definitely like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of really really bad songs for every single like good song <laughs> that I'm able to write and um, yeah I think it just changed a lot from being like this very like folky weird singer songwriter stuff to to what I have now which is definitely like a lot more synthy and I love like harmonies and I love having like, tons and tons of vocal layers and all these all these things that are like really exciting to me mm -hmm. yeah how would you say you've grown as a person compared to when you were younger I think I was just like a really really like scared kid mm. I was like really scared of people and of myself and and everything around me but I think over the years I finally have like fallen into myself and accepted myself for what I am and and uh, just become a comfortable person um, which is a really hard thing like yeah people act like it's so easy to just like accept yourself but it, I think it takes a long 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 time and I think I had an exceptionally long process just because I was just so confused <laughs> like didn't know who I was um, but I think I finally like I'm figuring it out and I feel a lot more comfortable mm. with who I am what would you say have been your biggest challenges so far in your life? Um, I don't know. I think growing up I was always 
so focused on like getting out of my hometown and getting out of my family and just being able to survive that that definitely took precedent over like figuring out who I was as a person. I was always just like like trying to figure out like how I can move out and how I can pay for rent and things like that. So I think the biggest challenge for me growing up was just like getting out and, and growing up. I think I had to grow up really, really fast. So yeah. What does love mean to you? Um, I think love is everything. And I think that love is a lot more than, than romantic. Mm. I think there's like a lot more like many more facets to it than, than people think. And I know I have a ton of love in my life, even though I may not have very much romantic love. And yeah, I feel super loved and I, I feel super lucky that now in 2018 that love is this extremely beautiful, big, um, like undefinable thing. Yeah, last question. What do you want to be remembered for? Oh goodness, <laughs> that's a tough one. Um, I just hope that my lasting legacy in the world is just that I've, like, made a positive impact on anyone's life, you know? I would hate for, for what I end up being, being something that, you know, hurts people. I just really hope that I make a lot of people feel a lot of things and help them kind of understand themselves as I'm understanding myself. Mm -hmm. I love this so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye.